wanted to use this video to show you how to use the new lofted flange tool in Fusion 360 to create a sheet metal cone. I'm going to be using two arcs for the sketches to create my gap in the sheet metal for unfolding, but later on I'll show you another method. So let's get started. I'll start my sketch on the XY plane and then draw a center point arc with a radius of 6 inches. I'll then wrap it around, move the dimension out of the way, then I'll draw two construction lines from the end point of the arc to the center and one from the center vertically as my reference line. I have previously saved a gap angle so I'll apply that now between the two construction lines and it's called gap and it's five degrees. I'll then reposition it to be able to divide it by two with another dimension. Whoops, wrong side. Let's try again. And we'll divide that by two. So that gives me a quick way to control the gap. Finish my sketch. I'll then create a construction plane that is 10 inches off the base. I'll do another center point arc on that plane with a radius of 4 inches. And I'll use the construction lines to give me my constraints for this arc on the same two construction. One I missed, so I'll just use a coincident to join it to it. I'm all finished with my sketching. In the sheet metal environment, I'll go to flange, pick on the lofted flange, and pick on the two sketches. Doesn't matter the order. I'll pick on die formed, not fast break form, die formed, and I'll say OK. My sheet metal is 16 gauge because that's my default. And as you can see, that's a very quick way to make a cone in Fusion 360. Now, if you want to unfold it, with a flat pattern, just stick on any surface you want and it'll work just fine. I would like to remind you that if you wanted to unfold this with the unfold command, it will not work because there's no flat edge to pick up the thickness. So what you have to do is go to extrude in the sheet metal environment is fine, zoom up on one edge and extend it ever so slightly. I'm going to use 0 0.01 inches which gives me a small flat surface. This is a join extrusion. I then can use the unfold command on that little flat area as you can see. If you would like to slice your cone to make a truncated cone, you will use a split splitting surface but you cannot do the body directly. You must maintain the surface cut to be square to the surface. Here's your method. Make an offset plane and go up the height you want to start your angle plane for your cut. I'm going to go up 5 inches. On that plane I'm going to make a quick sketch and do a real small line to rotate my plane around. It doesn't have to be very long. Go to your plane at an angle, pick on that plane and rotate it whatever angle you desire. I'm going to use 30 degrees. Now you cannot use that to split body, you must use a split face. This will give you the ability to get a square plane. So I go to modify, split face, I'm going to pick the outside face, I find it more easier for me, and the split plane will be the one I just made. As you can see it splits the face and puts a line along it, which acts almost like a sketch line. But that's, it did not split the body, it just split the surface. The next step is to create a surface that is perpendicular to the outside or normal. So you go to the surface environment and pick on rule surface. 
pick on the line you just cut and you'll see that you want to go in with it a distance to clear this surface. That's enough right there. I'm going to go ahead and it, notice it's normal to the surface. That means it's square to it. it as a new body. I'm going to go ahead and extend that surface out so you can see that it's normal to it. Let's look at it from the side and you'll be able to see it very easily. See how it changes along the surface to be normal to the angle. The next step is to split the body using the surface you just created. Go to modify and in the solid environment pick split body. Pick on the body you want to split from the browser and the splitting tool. As you can see the split has failed because there's a slight is not overlapping the cut perfectly. So what you need to do is go to the surface environment, pick your extend tool, pick on each side in turn and just move it out just a little bit. Do it on both sides to be sure it's covering the whole model. Say OK. Now your split will work perfectly. I'll go back to the solid environment, split body, pick on the body and the splitting plane and say OK. As you can see it worked this time just fine and I have two bodies. I'm going to pick on the top one and remove it. I do, do not delete it, just remove it. And you can turn off the splitting plane. As you see now you have to update your flat pattern and you have a new flat pattern with square edges using that method. I mentioned earlier another method of making the gap in your sheet metal and what I've done here is just use a lofted clunk uh, cone which is solid. To do a split in this you can use another method. Make a sketch on one of the planes that goes through it. Draw your line straight through it. I would go past each end and then constrain it to the origin to be sure it's perfectly in the center. Make sure it goes past the end like so. Then you go to your extrude, think, then extrude and pick on that and you can then drag it out to cut the surface completely. That gives you the gap you need to do the flat pattern. That's just another method of putting a gap in your sheet metal if you don't want to model with arcs. Hope you enjoyed this and hope to increase your use of Fusion 360.